started before Ramadan in this blessed month of Ramadan. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it a month of opening for all of us, inshallah. Personally, and in the Ummah in general, and especially for the people in Gaza, inshallah. And Sudan as well, inshallah. Type. So inshallah, like I'll, I'll start the program today. It might be a little bit longer, like an hour, 20 minutes or something. Right? If you get tired, please let me know. We don't have to finish today. You know, we, we have time, alhamdulillah. Uh, and inshallah, like I know there is another program going in parallel, so I, I will try to finish early so those of you who want to attend can actually go and attend. Remember, uh, in Ramadan, the nights, it's time for Qiyam. And it's, it's better to do actions and pray more than talk, inshallah. But khair, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to do both today, inshallah. Right. So uh, today, inshallah, this is a, uh, a very important chapter in the story of Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi, the generation of Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi. And there is a lot of lessons, inshallah, that we will learn today, hopefully. And it also illustrates not only um, the character of Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi, but what he represented and what was at the heart of the struggle, inshallah. So uh, to start off, just a quick reminder, I know it has been like five times, I cannot summarize five times in two minutes, but I'll stop where we uh, stopped last time. We saw how the crusaders came from the very beginning, how the response of the Muslims were very weak, and we saw how scholars rose up, up to the challenge, and we saw the, the process of change, gradually how it happened, with the Imad al-Din Zinki, the Nur al-Din Zinki, and the, the story of Salah al-Din, how it started, it was amazing, especially in Egypt. And... The last two times we focused on two things. The major victory of Salah al-Din, which is the Battle of Hattin, and him opening Jerusalem. But we also focused that it wasn't just a military victory. The compassion, the magnanimity, the character that he showed touched people. We saw that he's not just a, a, an ingenious strategist and a military leader, but we saw his heart, his compassion, his tenderness, his gentleness, his uh, relation with the Quran, his relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his akhlaq, if you will. That really is what made Salah al-Din shine. That's why most people loved Salah al-Din. It is said even his enemies loved Salah al-Din. And we saw last time, if you remember the concept of uh, the counter-attack, do you guys remember that? We said the biggest victory of Salah al-Din, in my view at least, was not that he conquered Jerusalem and he brought Jerusalem back to the Ummah and defeated the Crusaders in Hattin. What happened next was also very important. Once that happened, do you remember? We said the Pope in Europe, Right, issued another crusade, and Salah al-Din was now to face a crusade with 22 different European nations. And it is said that, you remember the army of the, Ger the German army was 200,000, let alone the, the UK and the France and Germany. So it was almost like an impossible encounter. And for me, the ability to stand and not compromise in, fa in face of such a difficulty is one of the biggest victories of Salah al-Din. And if you remember last time, we said, uh, and again, I'm going to just, I'm going quickly, I know, but I just want to go for today. We said one of the things Salah al-Din did and he focused on was that before taking the city of Jerusalem, he focused on taking all the cities on the coast because he realized that from a strategic point of view, there is where the enforcements come from. But we said there was one city that resisted, the city of Sur, and that's where the, the new campaign launched from. And last time, we saw the Battle of Akka, and we discussed this for the whole, yani last time, how the Crusaders started from Sur, they marched towards the city of Akka, they, they surrounded 3,000 of Salah al-Din's men in, in this, this city, and the long battle happened. And we said the battle took how long? Anybody remembers? It took two to three years. So the Franks, the whole European army, hundreds of thousands, could not take the city from Salah al-Din for years. Those 3,000 garrison resisted. So we had the garrison in, in Akka, and then the, the, the crusaders around it, and the army of Salah al-Din around it. And we saw what happened from epidemics to different challenges. But we said at the end of the two to three years, especially after Richard, the Lionheart, you know, the, the king of, the kings came themselves, as I said, the king of France, the king of uh, Germany, and the king of uh, England, they all came. And we saw how Richard built a trebuchet, and I forgot to get the trebuchet today. I'm sorry for this, right? And uh, it, we said with the, with the characteristics of this, it was uh, different than the way Muslims build them. Muslims build many trebuchets, right? Like, you know, 40, 50. Richard spent three months building one trebuchet. That is five stories high. And it threw like not a small stone, huge stones. And a breach happened in the walls of Akka. The city has been surrounded. 
And eventually the garrison of Akka surrendered, if you remember, right? And we said there was a betrayal that Richard held them and demanded a ransom from Salah al-Din. And he ended up killing all the people inside the, the, the city of Akka, right? And that's what I think we stopped. And I, I think what we uh, concluded last time was the following. When the city of Akka fell, it was said that Salah al-Din was like a mother that lost her son. Because it has been two to three years he's defending the city. But it was the people around him that told him something that will start today's chapter. They said, maybe that is good. It has been three years, two to three years. They're surrounding the city and we're surrounding them. And we could not meet them in a final battle because they, they're entrenched. Now that they took the city of Akka, they have to leave. Allow them to leave and maybe we can meet them on the way and maybe we can have one big battle. And maybe Allah will grant us victory and we will def defeat the army of the Franks in a battle like Hattin and it will be over. And that is where our story starts today, right? So the story of today is the aftermath of the, the fall of the city of Akka. It, uh, I would call it the way to Jerusalem. So now after the city of Akka fell, Right? You can see Jerusalem is inland. So before the Franks can go inland to Jerusalem, they had to take another coastal city, the city of Jaffa. And therefore, now a struggle will happen. The Franks are going to start marching to attack the city of Jaffa, and Salah al-Din has to stand against them. And if you remember, we said the reinforcements were coming daily from Europe, right? We discussed that last time. So now Salah al-Din started saying what? Maybe we can ambush them. Maybe finally they go out of that city on their way to the city of Yaffa. Maybe we can have a battle in the open. And maybe that will be it. Right? But what happened is the following. So Salah al-Din arranged for that. But Richard was a very uh, cunning strategist. So he realized he does not want to get surrounded by the army of Salah al-Din. So what did he do? He arranged that he marches by the coast with ships in the sea. So basically you cannot surround him. Right? And if, if, if he needs supplies, this, the ships from the sea can always supply him. And then he, he made his army like in a very interesting formation. Knights with full armor. And then uh, you have the infantry with their armor, you know, on the side. And he gave them clear instructions, which was very interesting strategy. Do not be lured by Salah al -Din. Meaning what? Maintain your formation. When he attacks, don't attack him. Just block the attack. Put your shields on. Do not go and chase him. And what happened? Salah al-Din started the famous Muslim technique, which is what? Attack. And then you try to what? Lure them out. You know, you attack, you harass, and then you start to retreat. They run after you, then you surround them, right? But Richard maintained cohesion. He refused to engage Salah al-Din completely. He just maintained cohesion and started walking. And daily attacks were happening, barrages of arrows and, you know, uh, catapults even firing at them and attacks day and night. And it was miserable. This distance could be covered in a day or two. And it started to drag in weeks. The army of Richard was like harassed day and night by Salah al-Din. Yet, he maintained the strategy of what? I'm not going to face Salah al-Din in a... I'm not going to like turn and go for him. I'll maintain... I'll, I'll march by the coast. And I will just keep heading towards the city of Yaf. Now, what happened next is one very famous incident, right? And it's at a place called Arsuf. Arsuf, like when you, when you look to the, the, the place itself, it's again, this is the beach, right? This, this is the Franks army. And there is a forest trees here. And Salah al-Din thought that is an excellent place for a trap. That's an ex excellent place for us. If we can drag them out and if we can ambush them and they can go in there, that's an excellent place for an ambush. So Salah al-Din decided, he started hiding his troops in the trees. Then he surprised the Franks when they appeared. All the, the army of Salah al-Din appeared and he arranged them, right? So you can see the Franks are very well arranged. They have the infantry with their shields and then all the knights in the middle, right? And then Salah al-Din started again harassing the Franks. He arranged his army, right? So you, you have all like the, 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 the knights of Salah al-Din and the infantry and what? Uh, he has a, something called mounted, in, uh, mounted uh, archers. You know, archers are people with bow and arrows, right? A mounted archer is an archer that rides a horse. So light cavalry. They're not strongly armed. 
They, they depend on speed. So their technique is not to engage into hand-in-hand -hand combat, but they use their horse to quickly come close by, throw their arrows, and then retreat. So it's light cavalry. And they use this hit and run technique, right? So he, the, the light cavalry of Salah al-Din with the infantry started attacking the Frankish army. And the Frankish army had Richard in the center, the hospitalers and the Templars, right? The, the Franks, the, 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 the cavalry. And the, the attack started and, at the Battle of Arsul. And in the beginning, Muslims started because they were so upset. At this point, they're tired of this ordeal. They want to get it done with. So they put all their effort, you know, all the zealousy they have, right? And they started going towards the infantry with their shields, right? And they started a barrage of arrows and the infantry started colliding with each other. And surely enough, they started to push the Franks back. And in the beginning, it seemed, especially in the back, right? They had major advantage against the hospitalists and they started pushing the infantry. Heavy casualties started to happen, right? And at that point, they see that they're winning. Some of the archers decided to dismount and start, you know, sitting on the ground and aiming so that their, their aim is accurate. And there was major, like it, it appeared that the things are going well in the back, right? And therefore, all the other infantry did the same thing. And here something happened. It flipped. Usually, it was the opposite. That the army of Salah al-Din maintains cohesion, cohesion. The Franks attack. They retreat. They lure them in. And then they attack. Here something opposite happened. The Franks started to retreat, and you see the army of Salah al-Din losing cohesion. And they started chasing the Franks. And they started chasing the infantry back and pushing and pushing and pushing. The hospitalers decided they wanted to attack. And Richard, he was a very good strategist. He understood, don't do that. Let them come in. Let them come. Do not start chasing them. This is how they get us. Do not leave the coast. Let them come in close, and then let's attack altogether. And indeed, the Muslims started seeing they're winning, they're winning. The Franks or the infantry is being defeated, so they started chasing them. And at the right moment, the hospitalists couldn't take it anymore, and Richard gave the order. And then the Franks charged in all, 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 you can see all the, all the knights charged at once. Most of the infantry were, uh, the, the, the mounted archers were dismounted. The infantry were not cohesive. You cannot withstand the attack of a Frank, Frankish knight if you're not cohesive. And it was a disaster. So the, most of the people of Salah al-Din, the light cavalry and the infantry could not sustain this charge. And they got crushed and they got pushed. And the Franks started chasing them. They reached all the way where Salah al-Din was. Right? And a terrible battle happened. And Ibn Shaddad narrates this battle. He said, I was in the center. I saw Salah al-Din himself fighting ordering people to stand by and not to retreat, ordering the drummers and people would come back and they would stand and the, the Frankish knight, he said, I left and I went to the right side. I saw the same situation. I saw his brother in the same situation. Wherever I went, I saw the Muslims that could not sustain the attack of that, this attack of the Franks. And he said it was the personal regiment of Salah al-Din. He had heavily, uh, it's not shown here, I have it in an updated slide. Uh, unlike what people think, most people think that, uh, you know, the Muslim knights were light armored, right? Like, do, that's, that's true. This is the, the, the mounted archers. But Salah al-Din had a special regiment that started to form in his day. You know, we discussed the Mamali, right? This, this, those, those knights that Salah al-Din, you know, got as kids, raised up. Those were heavily fortified, meaning what? They wore armor. They were heavy cavalry. And Salah, this was the personal Salah al-Din regiment, right? It was this regiment that started moving in and started blocking the Franks. Nevertheless, they could not sustain the attack of, because of the lack of cohesion. And they started retreating. And it was almost like a rout. And the, the Muslims started to lose people. And Salah al-Din ordered their drummers to, to withstand their place. But the Franks kept attacking. And whenever they retreat, the Franks would stop. They would not chase them. And then eventually Salah al-Din saw that many people died. He lost more than from 7,000 to 10,000 people in this battle, right? And Salah al-Din orders a retreat to the forest. And the Franks started chasing, but again, Richard gave his order. Do, do not follow them in the forest. This is probably a trap. So he decided to stop and retreat and maintain his cohesion and go back to the shore again. And the battle ended that way.
in the battle, this is called the Battle of Arsuf. The Battle of Arsuf, Salah al-Din lost between 7,000 to 10,000 men. It was, from a military perspective, actually a defeat. So if, if you read the history, Salah al-Din got defeated. But in my view, like the Battle of Uhud, defeat is not a loss of a battle. Defeat is a loss of a principle. Is when I lose heart, when I start running away. What you find Ibn Shaddad saying, Salah al-Din stayed the entire night up, taking care of the wounded himself. Next day, he ordered his, his army to line up, go forward for Richard, right? And ask for a second round. So I'm not retreating. Yes, I lost 10,000, but the army is still there. And it is said Richard refused to attack Salah al-Din. Basically, you can see he has strategy. I do not want to. My target is the city of Yef. So he refused to, to fight. He started marching towards the city of Yef. At this point, people came to Salah al-Din. Same what happened with Nur al-Din Zinki. Told him the same thing. He said, look, we lost 10,000 people. We need, we need a new army. We need horses. We need more weapons. You are spending so much money on the people in the message. Those people that worship, students of knowledge, take that money and give it to us. And remember how Nur al-Din answered that? You guys remember? He said, do you want me to take money from people that fight for me day and night with arrows that never miss and give it to you? And you fight with arrows that miss and only when, you, when you're awake? Their dua is an arrow that never misses. Hal tunsaruna illa bidua. Salah al-Din said the same thing Nur al-Din Zaki said. And that shows you how much he believed in the power of dua. Right? Nevertheless, now the question became for Salah al-Din, what are we going to do? Richard is on the way, uh, on the way to the city of Yafid. So what's the plan? This idea of meeting him in the, he refused to go inland, right? And it seemed that the last battle, Salah al-Din is starting to lose. And people started, some people started telling him, give up, khalas, khalas, it's okay. You have, you've done your best. You fought for three years. Yeah, he give him Jerusalem. All what he wants is to give him Jerusalem and let's call it, call the day off. And Salah al-Din refused. Now the question became, he's heading towards the city of Yaf. What should we do? And people said, okay, if you want to defend the city, you have to go inside. And then the same situation will happen like Ak. Our garrison will be inside, they surround the city, and we'll spend another two years in agony. At this point, they switch strategy. And again, this, the importance of strategy. Salah al-Din met with all his leaders and they decided one thing. They said, listen, it's all about Jerusalem. It's all about Jerusalem. So let's focus the battle in Jerusalem. Once they go inland, they don't have the sea, we can surround them. We can cut their supply line, right? What about the city of Yafa? He, he decided not to repeat what happened in Ak. The only possible solution was what? Something that was very hard. We have to destroy the city of Yafa. Meaning what? We have to burn the city so that when Richard comes to the city of Yefa, he finds nothing, no base at all. And that was such a heavy decision for Salah al-Din. Yet, everybody agreed this is the wide, wisest thing to do. And Salah al-Din kept attacking Richard to delay him. And meanwhile, he ordered the city of Yefa to be completely destroyed. It's all destroyed. And Richard took about from two weeks to a month. To, to move this small distance. He reaches the city of Yafa to find there is no city left. There is no base for him. There is no shelter. There is no walls. And the attacks are continuing. And now Salah al-Din switched his strategy. He concentrated all his forces in Jerusalem. And now he's telling him what? You have to leave the coast and come inland. At this point, a new chapter happens. And this is now very important. It's a very important lesson. Richard, and the Franks were very tired. It's have now close to three years. All what they got is what? The city of Akka and the city of Yafa is destroyed. And hundreds of thousands died. And the battles and Salah al-Din is not desisting and he's not giving them any respite. So Richard started doing what? Let's negotiate. Let's negotiate. Maybe we can have a deal. Maybe we can have maybe a two-state solution. Right? Literally, that's what he suggested. Right? So he sent a letter to Salah al-Din. And look what he's saying. He's saying, listen, the Muslims and the Franks are done for. The land is ruined utterly at the hands of both sides. Property and lives on both sides are destroyed. This matter has received its due. And then he tells him, look, 
Remember when they came, they were telling Salah al-Din what? We're going to take everything from you. Remember the threats? They said, this is Europe. We're not, it's not going to be Jerusalem. We'll take Egypt and Syria. Now look what they're saying. They're saying, okay, all what we have to talk about is Jerusalem. And the Holy Cross, you know, the, the true cross that they took from them. Now Jerusalem is the center of our worship, which we will never renounce. Give me Jerusalem. So basically the deal is the following. Listen, give me the city of Jerusalem. I'll keep Yafa, Yafa and Akka and I will leave. And that's it. You can take everything else. Just give me the city of Jerusalem and we're done. And we will live together. You have, you, you have your cities. I have my city. You, you live in peace. I peace. We're good. That's all what I'm asking. If you were Salah al -Din, what would you do? What do you think should be done here? <laughs> Subhanallah, perfect ayah. <laughs> So, the interesting part, actually, some people suggested for Salah al-Din, just give them Jerusalem. Let them leave, give them Jerusalem. It's okay, right? But Salah al -Din response was the following, right? He said, Jerusalem. And the, the reason I'm telling you this, because we have to be clear why, what is, what's behind this, right? He says, Jerusalem is ours, just as much as, much as it's yours. Indeed, for us, it is greater then it is for you, for it is where our Prophet وسلم, came on his night journey and the gathering place of angels. And look, notice this sentence. It says, La yutasawr. It is unimaginable. Talking that I give you Jerusalem, you, you, know, you know the power of imagination. You can imagine anything. You can imagine an elephant with wings, right? I can imagine that. I mean, imagination, you're free. He said, the idea of giving you Jerusalem is beyond my imagination. Meaning it's not imaginable in the, in the realm of imagination. I cannot even imagine that. Let alone talk about this with other Muslims. This is completely not possible. Absolutely not. But notice what else he says. This is now very important. He says, as for the other lands. All the other lands. Akka, uh, Antakya, Tarab, all the other lands that you guys have, they are all ours. You have nothing. See, is there any compromise here? Did you see what he's saying? Is there a two-state solution there? Because he says, every single city that you took is ours. The fact that you took those cities was because the Muslims at that time were weak. As long as Allah gives us power, and as long as we, we will fight you, and eventually we will take all of them back. Not one city is yours, let alone Jerusalem. Right? I'm not even... That you have even Akka is not acceptable to me. Right? So you see the stance of Salah. He was very clear what he's fighting for. Nothing belongs to me. Right? Now, after this, the question was, okay, Richard took the, took the city of Yaf. What will be his next move? From there, he has two possible solutions. Can you guess? There is, there is two possible outcomes that Richard can do from a strategy perspective. He can either choose to go inland and attack Jerusalem, but there's another choice. What would it be? Asqalan. And why is that dangerous? If he goes to Asqalan, which is towards where? What's here? So will Richard, Richard can have a choice. He can go for Jerusalem or he can go to the base of Salah al-Din. Egypt was very important. This campaign of Salah al-Din, this all the all this money that's coming, all the food. Where do you think those soldiers, Salah al-Din spent more than 10,000 dinars every day? Every single, where is this money coming from? Who's feeding this army every single day for the last three years? Where is that food coming from? Where is the logistics? You know what I mean? And it was Egypt that was supplying all this. But the reason I'm saying this, this campaign would not have been possible if Nur al-Din and Salah al-Din did not unify Egypt with Shem. He could not have done that. From a logistical perspective, he would run out of money, out of food, out of supply. It's crucial that we work together. So Salah al-Din realized, Richard might actually chose to go to Egypt, which is the base that's supplying this campaign, and that's a big threat. So he gathered his commanders, and he said, we need to defend both cities. We need to defend Asqalan, and we need to defend Jerusalem. The response came to him. We don't have enough men for both tasks. They are so many, 
well supplied, but at this point, we're left alone. We can't defend both cities. So you choose which one you want to defend. And Salah Din said, but I cannot leave Asqalian for them. The opinion was what? Can anybody guess? What should we do with the city of Asqalian? We have to destroy the city of Asqalian. And that was, Asqalian was a beautiful city. Literally a beautiful city. A city of scholars and libraries. It's a, what's one such a beautiful, it's like a gem. And, and Salah al-Din issued the command. Everybody told him, unfortunately, the only thing, you have to destroy the city. And Ibn Shaddad was with Salah al-Din. And he said Salah al-Din told him the following. As he was standing and supervising the destruction of the city in tears. And then he looked to Ibn Shaddad and he said the following. And you can see the sincerity of this man. He said, for me to lose all my children is lesser of an evil more tolerable than to remove one stone from the city of Asqalin. I'd rather lose all my children. But what can I do? This is, the effort, this is what strategy requires, and all my commanders suggested to do this. And he had to do the difficult task with his own hands, destroy the city of Asqalin. And again, Richard was frustrated. Wherever he goes, he doesn't find any base, no cities. You go and it's ruins, ruins. And the attacks day and night are happening not desisting. So now Richard is very disturbed. So he's negotiations again, right? So Richard sends to Salah al-Din, and this is actually very interesting, very interesting lesson here. He tells him, I got a solution. I have a solution. Let's negotiate. And at this point, Salah al-Din used to send his brother, Al-Adil, right? And a kind of um, admiration between uh, Richard and Salah al-Din nights develop. This period, because of the interaction, Richard had such a high respect for Salah al-Din, his brother and the Muslim knights. And some of them view Richard as what? This man is, is a strong leader. He's, he's, yeah, he's our enemy. But we see his strength. We see his determination. So there is some kind of an admiration started to happen. So he, he asked Al-Adil, which is Salah al-Din's brother, come, I, ha- I have a proposal. And I think this proposal will work. I have a solution. I, I can solve the problem. So he told him, what's the solution? And guess what the solution was? He said, listen, I have a solution that will please everybody. I have, my sister is here. I propose you marry my sister. You're the king and she's the queen and you both rule Jerusalem together. How about that? Right? King and the queen, everybody's happy. And I will attend and Salah al-Din will attend and we call the day off. Right? And now it's good. They're the king and the queen, the Muslim is, we're, you're together, we're good. And I leave and things are good. Right? And of course, Al-Adil said, that's not a bad proposal at all. <laughs> why, why not? I get married and I, I rule Jerusalem. As, actually, it's, it's, and we stop the battles, it's good, right? So he said, I'm going to go tell my brother. Right? And Al-Adil goes to Salah al-Din. And he tells me, Salah al-Din, Richard has a good solution. What is it? He proposed I marry his sister, Joanna, and I'm the king and she's the queen, and we rule, and he will leave. And Salah al-Din, he's joking with you. He doesn't mean it. He says, no, 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 he's serious. He says, he cannot mean it. He's just, it's a joke. He says, no, no, no. He said, if you agree, he will do it. What's going on here? Here is what's likely going on. It's a political game. What's going on is the following. He's trying to give Al-Adil something that he likes. Then Salah al-Din tells him what? No. Now what happens with it? So if you tell your, I want it, and my brother tells me no, what happens now? A rift. And then Richard can start playing in it. You see that? So he, he was doing, do you remember game theory? He was throwing something, expecting Salah al-Din to say no. And when he says no, that's what I want. Now I know my next move. I'll play off his brother. And I'll cause a rift. And maybe we can do something with it. Between them. Salah al response was amazing. A strategist. She said, okay, go tell Richard I agree. Uh, why is that interesting? I-, I hope you understand what the lesson here is. I don't do what my enemy expects. He gave him something out of the box. He said, okay, okay, go tell him. I actually agree. Go ahead with it. Right? So, of course, he will add also, and he went to Richard and said, then we're good. Let's do it. And now Richard was taken back and said, okay, let me speak to my sister. 
right? And then here is the response. He said he went, spoke to his sister. His sister was so upset that she took a ship and left to England. <laughs> it's like, I marry an infidel? Are you out of your mind? Right? And she left the entire region, right? So upset at her brother, right? So that plot didn't work, right? <laughs> Which is interesting. Now, so meanwhile, something else was going on. Remember the city of Sur? If you remember, we said the, the campaign started from Sur, and it was an Italian knight by the name of Conrad that fortified the city and originally led the campaign. Conrad was now starting to be scared. Why? He saw that the, the Franks are tired and Richard might leave. And he sees if Richard leaves, Salah al-Din is going to come and he is going to yani, pour his wrath on me, right? So he decided to do what? Maybe I can negotiate personally with him. So he started communicating with Salah al-Din. If I was to leave this campaign and I take my troops and go back to Sur, can we have a truce that you leave me alone for like 10, 20 years? And Salah al-Din actually agreed. Right? This is strategy. Agreed why? It's, it's going to weaken Richard. I'm putting a rift. And communication started to happen. And Conrad started communicating with Salah al-Din and said, Khalas, deal. Give me that and I will leave and go to the city of Sur. I will not attack you and you do not attack me. And, and that's a deal. And then something interesting happened. Right? <laughs> Sunday, not Friday, Sunday. <laughs> church service. Conrad, after the church, goes out to some of, you know, the, yeah, some uh, aesthetics or uh, I don't want to say monks, if you will, Christ Christian monks that, you know, worship in the church. And they decide, like, can we go for lunch together? And Conrad agrees. He goes out with them, the a dagger, right? And they stab Conrad to his death. Those monks were assassins pretending to be monks. Remember we discussed how the assassins do that, right? Now the question was, who did this? Who killed Conrad? Who do you think did this? It's actually Richard. And, and interestingly enough, Richard blamed who for it? Salah al-Din. And you know what now? See, everybody now is upset. Look at those, uh, you know, Muslims. Look at Salah al-Din. He killed Conrad. Now everybody is upset, which is good. See, the, it's good for me. But we know it was Richard, and later in his life, he was held for trial in it in Europe. He had to pay for that. He was accused, he's the one that contacted the assassins, and he's the one that arranged for getting rid of Conrad, right? And now, again, Richard has to face the, okay, everybody's unified, but now he decides to take the move. I want to take the city of Jerusalem. And he started ordering his army to march towards the city of Jerusalem. Salah al-Din gathered his army and started fortifying the city of Jerusalem. And he decided now that they're inland, he po poisoned all the water wells. No supplies, no water in the region, right? And then he ordered his army to do what? That the same thing, surround them, cut their supply line, slow them up. Now, we, now they, they face the same situation in Hattin, right? And if they, if they arrive around Jerusalem, there is no sea to supply them. They will be fully surrounded, will cut their supply line, I'll be from inside and some army from inside, from outside, and we'll attack, keep attacking them. And at this point, Richard was really disturbed. Numerous battles happened. If you look to Ibn Shaddad's biography of Salah al-Din, almost daily battles. And not big, but small. And Salah al-Din is winning and, you know, and lots of casualties are happening in the Franks. Nevertheless, Richard does not desist. He continues slowly to march towards the city of Jerusalem. And Salah al-Din makes a decision. I am going to defend the city myself. Meaning what? I'm not going to assign the defense of Jerusalem. I will be inside myself to defend the city. And people started arguing with him. That's dangerous. Because what happens if the city falls? You're, you're, you're our king. You know, you're our... And Salah didn't insist. The city of Jerusalem is so valuable. I will defend it personally. And he worked day and night to fortify the city of Jerusalem. Right? At this point, Richard start marching towards the city of Jerusalem. And then, uh, this is, by the way, one of the uh, speeches that Salah al-Din gave to his soldiers in, uh, when he was uh, trying to, I, I, I'll move quickly. There is so many letters and things happening in, in, in the time that I would just skip. Now, Salah al-Din gives the orders, I keep attacking Richard. 
keep surrounding him day and night. No break. Attacks day by night, day by night. The march was terrible, right? It was really very, very hard, especially with the supply lines now get, go, getting longer and Yef has destroyed. Richard had to put so much time in rebuilding the city of Yef because he realized I need it. So a lot of the energy was building Yef, the fortification of it, and things were not going well for Richard. And at that point, he said, okay, what should we do? Now, Salah al-Din is in Jerusalem, worried, because he does not, Richard is very determined. The Franks are very determined. And will they come? Will they take Jerusalem? Will I lose this city again? Right? Will the Muslims stay with me for, for another two, three years if, if, if it demands? That was the question. Right? Now, one thing that we know from Ibn Shaddad, he says, one night in Jerusalem, right? It was a Friday night. He says, I go to the Sultan as his habit every night. Why does he go to the Sultan every night? Ibn Shaddad is a hadith scholar. Every night he visits Salah al-Din. Guess why? Two. Spirit, actually, it's more than spiritual advice. Because Salah al-Din wanted to study hadith. He's serious about studying. And he asked Ibn Shaddad to accompany him in all the battles. So every single night he would study. So it was their study time. So Ibn Shaddad comes, you know, to like teach hadith to Salah al-Din. And he said, I found the Sultan in a state that he was very distressed. So he told him, I see that you're very distressed because of Jerusalem. And he says, yes. And then Salah al-Din looks to Ibn Shaddad and tell, he sees Ibn Shaddad also dead in sleep. So he tells him, okay, why don't you just let, take, take a rest tonight? Go back, halas, it's okay. Go back, just sleep a little bit, you know, and we'll have rest. And then we'll continue tomorrow. And Ibn Shaddad says, I go to my tent. Right, and I saw the dwelling place and I couldn't sleep. Right, and then I return and I find Salah al Din before Fajr sitting in the same place, again, thinking, maps, fortification. And he said, It seems that you did not sleep here last night. And he said, I could not sleep. And then Ibn Shaddad says something really very interesting. And again, we know that because it's his writing. He said, He said, Ya Sayyidi, I have an idea. While I was by myself, an idea came to me. And here is what I'm going to tell you. You do the following. It is a Friday night. It's Fajr, Fajr time. You make wudu. Then you go to the Aqsa Mosque and give charity in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then between Fajr, you know, the Adhan and Iqama, Friday night, right? And at the Aqsa Mosque, between Adhan and Iqama, you pray two rakahs after giving that charity and in the position of sujood. You make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are out of your means, that you exerted everything you have and you have no power left and you seek his help and you solely depend on him. And he tells him, I know someone like you doing such kind of a dua, Allah will never turn down this dua. And he said, I watch Salah al -Din doing exactly what I commanded. And I want you to notice the combination here. Do you see the combination? Friday night, right? Aqsa Mosque giving charity, the dua between Adhan and Iqama, there is a hadith, it's a moment of Allah responds to your dua, and he told him to make dua where? In sujood. He combined the hadith of acceptance of dua, right? And told Salah al -Din, you have done everything you did. You're not sitting home and doing nothing and then making this dua. You exerted every, and Allah sees that. Salah al -Din used to, yani, in the battle of Akka, out of his own pocket, he, he supplied the army with 12,000 horses. He bought 12, it's not 12 horses, 12,000. Yeah, his personal wealth was thrown into this. Right? That's how much he was committed. And he said, I watched Salah al -Din giving the charity, going to the Aqsa Mosque between Adan and Iqam. And he said, I watched his sujood with his gray beard, now getting older, exhausted. And he said, I watched long sujood, tears come, coming out. An intense dua from Salah al -Din. He said, next day, our, uh, our uh, scouts came back that the Franks stopped their march. And then the scouts came back. They started debating with each other what they should do. What was happening? Richard gathered everybody and said, what should we do? Should we continue the advance towards Jerusalem or not? And they started to differ. The Templars, the Hospitallers, all the locals told him it's impossible to take Jerusalem. 
from a strategic perspective, it's impossible. And Richard asked them, okay, draw the map for me. Show me the fortification. And they showed him all what they know of the city. And the conclusion, Richard said the following statement. He said, this is a city that is impossible to take as long as Salah al-Din is alive and the Muslims are united around him. And he decided to call the attack off. The Franks stopped and the news came to Salah al-Din. They could not attack the city. They decided to leave. Now, if you, when you read history, people will tell you, yeah, Salah al-Din caused them havoc. And you know, was it that or was it his dua? Or is it both? But you get the idea, right? And I want you to see it illustrates Salah al-Din's reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And the importance of scholars and the importance of dua and the importance of taking all the means together. Because we, it's, for us, it's either or. It's like, I don't know why. You either go to demonstrations or make dua. Why don't you make dua in the demonstration? What's, what's, yeah, I mean, why are they exclusive? I don't know, right? Anyway, right? So now Richard started going, خلاص, he leaves and he goes back to the city of Kiev, right? Then Richard started doing what? Okay, if we can take Jerusalem, maybe I can go north. Maybe I can start taking all the cities that Salah al-Din took, Beirut and Saida. So he started sailing, preparing to do what? Let's attack other cities. Salah al-Din did a very interesting move. Once Richard left, Salah al-Din ordered his army, leave the city of Jerusalem. Now go at the city of Yafa that he rebuilt with the fortification. Surround the city and start attacking the city of Yafa. And a battle started happening. The Franks started defending the city and Salah al-Din army went. They built 40 trebuchets in like two nights and they started bombarding the walls and they reached the wall and they made a breach inside. And they were, as they attacked, they found that the, the defenders built a, they said a wooden wall behind it. So they started attacking. They burned this wooden wall. They found a, a wall of lances and spears and, you know, they were very determined, right? And the battle started raging and Salah al-Din offers them surrender the city in peace. They refuse. Eventually the, the army of Salah al-Din breaks through and they succeed in going to the city of Yafir. At this point, the defenders reach to Salah al-Din and say, well, truce. Let's go back to your truce. We'll give you the city, but allow us to go. And Salah al-Din says, if you deliver the city, you all go free. And then they tell him, but your soldiers, your soldiers have to stop. And he says, I can't control them. They just took the city, go into the citadel, right? And I'll try. And he ordered his commanders, go tell the soldiers to leave the city alone. Tell them to. And the soldiers of Salah al-Din at this point, some of them were really upset. Why do you think they're upset? Uh, look, the battle of Arsul, Akka. Now we win. And you do this. We attack. We take the city by the sword. Once we take it, they tell you truce and you tell us what? Leave everything. Right? And he commanded. And this, the soldiers were really at this point because there is full of grudges, right? They're human. They were really upset. And you, this like, you're too lenient kind of. You're like, leave us. Right? But he insisted. And an argument started to happen. Meanwhile, the news reached Richard that Yafa is under attack. And he turns his fleet and goes back to the city of Yafa, right? And then news came, the citadel, there are still Franks in the citadel of the city. So Richard decides to go down on the beach near Yafa. And he started a battle by the beach of the city of Yafa, starting to clear the beach. Salah al-Din receives the news, Richard is back and he's going to fight for the city of Yafa. What do you think Salah al-Din did? It's also inter interesting. Many of us, yeah, fight back, right? Salah al-Din ordered everybody out of the city, retreat. Why? Why do you think he did that? Shouldn't he fight for Yafa? What was the strategy? The strategy is Jerusalem, right? Why did he do this move? If you think you can leave and attack another city, I, I'll bring, he achieved what he wanted. He will refuse to do what, if he starts defending the city of Yafa and Richard surrounds him, that's not a good strategy, right? So he knows his strategy. I achieved my point. He orders a retreat. Richard at this point, astonished, sends a letter. And he sends this with one of Salah al-Din's men. And look what he says about Salah al-Din. He says the following. 
this sultan of yours is a great man. Islam has no greater king. There is no greater king on earth mightier than him. By God, he's great. Your sultan is the greatest sultan that Islam has. I could not have imagined that he would take the city of Yaffa in three months. How could he have taken it in three days? And then he says what? Greet the sultan for me and tell him, for God's sake, give me what I ask for so we can make peace. This matter has, must come to an end. Thy lands over the sea have been ruined. For this to go on is no good for us nor for you. Right? He's sending what? Let's negotiate. Let's find a deal. Right? Just give me Jerusalem. Just give me Jerusalem. I'll keep the cities that I have. I'll leave. And again, Salah al response is, no. No negotiations. Right? And at that point, also, things happen. Richard feels ill. He's really sick. And, and, and the most trivialist thing happened. Salah al sent uh, ice, fruits, and his personal doctor to Richard. Right? It's, like it's an act of chivalry. And some people say, like, how can you send your doctor to your enemy? And like, we can debate that, right? But you can see that what he's, there is some admiration between both of them. And this, all the acts of Salah al Din touched the Franks so much. Because they now understood what true chivalry is. What Salah al Din presented is something that caused a lot of disturbance in the mind of the Franks, right? So, what happened next? Richard finally sends to Salah al-Din. And he says, okay, خلاص, you keep Jerusalem. So let's change the treaty. I'm going to drop Jerusalem. All what I'm going to ask you is the following. I keep the cities, Akka and Yafa and Asqalan. Right? And you keep the rest. And Salah al-Din insisted, Asqalan, no. And as a matter of fact, no. Till Richard decided what type, خلاص, I'll give you Asqalan. Right? Can I keep Yafa and Akka? Two cities. That's it. Three years, two cities, right? And you take all the rest. And Salah al Din's what? No. Right? And here is what happened. Everybody around Salah al Din told him, Ya Salah al Din, accept the truce. This is the truce. Accept. We, it has been so long, right? We don't want him to stay. What does that mean? That the third crusade with the hundreds of thousands of knights that came, in three years, all what they can take is one city, Akka, and the destroyed city, Yafa. It means you broke the counterattack. Let him leave. We need the break too. The land is ruined on our side. The soldiers are exhausted, right? As a matter of fact, in one, uh, one situation that happened, I didn't say it, it was a small situation. Uh, Richard was out with some of his knights, and Salah al-Din had some of, not his personal regiment, some of the other soldiers. And he, scouts came and told him Richard is, you know, kind of alone. So he ordered his soldiers to go and they surrounded Richard. Right? So a few, you know, few soldiers. And then he told them, it's a good to attack him. Right? And Richard got his sword out and, you know, like, and then the soldiers, those soldiers looked at Salah al Din and told him the following. He said, tell your men, the ones that in Yafa told us to not take anything, tell them to come and attack Richard. We're not attacking him. What? People are not ideal. This is not the personal regiment of Salah al-Din, but soldiers were getting exhausted. And of course, Salah al-Din was very upset and people thought those soldiers, he's going to behead all of them because this is treason. But Salah al people did not, those soldiers are done. He actually forgave all of them. But it showed him what many of the soldiers are so sick of this battle. They're tired also. They're human, right? And Salah al-Din was... Should I accept the truth? And finally, because of everybody else, he decided to accept the truth with Richard. The truth meant the following. There will be no war, and there is a difference between peace treaty and the truth. What's the difference? Peace treaty means the following. I acknowledge that I acknowledge you. I acknowledge that Akka is a Frankish city. And I acknowledge that uh, Yafa is a Frankish city. And I acknowledge this is you and this is me. And then we have embassies in both and you have the ambassador. Truce is not this way. What is truce? You're my enemy. I'm your, I'm your enemy. We will have a ceasefire for three years. But did I acknowledge the right that you have a right to stay here? No. You see the difference? Right. So Salah al-Din made a truce, not peace. 
Truce meaning what? No, no battles for three years and three months. Right? And he told something to, to Ibn Shaddad that I wrote here is very, very powerful. He told Ibn Shaddad the following. He said, the reason I refuse to do this truce is because I don't know what will happen to me. I'm getting old and I'm getting sick. And I'm afraid I will die. My children, each one of them, will take a fort in the city and they will divide. And I know those Frankish people, they are going to return. They are very determined. They are going to return back. And I'm afraid my children will be so divided. And what will happen? They will take back Jerusalem again. And he told Ibn Shaddad, if you live long enough, you will see that happen. This is why I do not want a truce. This is why I want to remove all their lands, because they're going to come back. I'm afraid from my own children after me. Will they maintain this cohesion or will they start fighting among each other and we lose everything again? Right? You see where he's concerned. And he says, if you live long enough, you will see this. And a truce happened, finally. And this was the end of the Third Crusade. And indeed, Richard, after all this agony, could not visit Jerusalem. And he left. The last message he sent to Salah al-Din was the following. He said, after, after three years, I'm going to be back. And I'm going to take Jerusalem from you. And Salah al-Din said, and I'll be waiting, and I'd rather fight you than anybody else. Right? What do you see here? They are clear on what they're doing. They didn't say, Khalas, you know, we have permanent peace, you're okay. I mean, it's not, it's not okay. We have truce, yes. But the, the, the struggle is, is clearly not over. It's about religion here. There is no compromise here, right? They were very clear about what they're doing. They met with Balian, the hospital knight, and the Mishaddad asked him a question. said, in those campaigns, how many people of you came, how many died? And the report says more than 500,000 came. And he said more than 200,000 perished. Like more than 200,000 perished. And more than this also died because of disease and things like that. He said very few people survived. So this campaign had a tremendous toll on, on the Franks. Salah al-Din had the same issue. A lot of people died. A lot of money was spent. And Ibn Shaddad and al Qadil father told him the countries are ruined. Spend time on now visiting all the countries and build, rebuilding the infrastructure. And for the first time, once this truce happened, right? Salah al-Din starts visiting Damascus. He did not visit Damascus for years. And people were so happy. And once he went to the Damascus, the, the governor of Damascus met Salah al-Din for the first time in years, the, the, the hero of Islam. And he takes him and says, look, I built this mansion for you. It's a place in your retirement. You know, the 401k retirement plan that we have with the, he said, now that you're done, here's a mansion that I, I built for you so you can enjoy and retire in. Salah al-Din's response. He looked at the big mansion. He said, this is a place built for someone that doesn't think he's going to die. And then he said, we were not created for this. We were created to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said something more popular. He said, and where did you get the money to, to do this from? And he removed the governor from power. You get the idea, right? Do you think this pleases me? Building a mansion, like what is this? And you, you can tell Salah al heart. He gathers his commanders. And this is actually a very important lesson. Look, truce, peace can be good and can be bad. Salah al first thing. Yes, we have truce. Truce doesn't mean what? The army relaxes and starts, you know, to do nothing. And khalas, they go and sleep. Because when the Franks are back, if we spend three years not training, not preparing, what will happen? Now we're prepared. We're, we're active. So he told them, what's next? What, where are we going to go? We're not going to sit, do nothing. And then he had two suggestions. One said, Asia Minor, the Seljuks, go because they, they're not with us. Go try to unify their countries. Another response was, the Eastern Districts, Khorasan. This is where the Mongols came from. And Salah al-Din says the following, we're going to do both together, not one, right? Do we have to?